Israel is trying to become a player in the world of natural gas. And now, in the middle of its military onslaught on the Gaza Strip, Israel has issued more licenses to drill. Trouble is, the Palestinians say some of those licenses are for areas in Gaza's territorial waters. People have known there's gas off the coast of Gaza for 30 odd years. The former Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat described the discovery as a gift from God. But because of the Israeli occupation, Occupation, they haven't been able to exploit it. So while Gaza City could look like this, it in fact looks like this. Gas rich, but in ruins. I'm Darin Abu Gaita. This is Pinch Point, where politics and geography collide. It was during the media fog that surrounds the war on Gaza that Israel decided to announce it had granted 12 new licenses for gas exploration. Six companies are involved, both Israeli and international. A consortium of three will be working in uncontested waters, what's known as Zone I. Another consortium will get to work in Zone G. But Palestinians say much of that area falls within their maritime borders under international law. It's easy to understand why the gas deals have attracted close to zero media attention. Since October 7th, the media have had to focus their energies on reporting on the deaths of tens of thousands of civilians in Gaza. We're going to need some maps to explain what's going on, plus a tiny bit of basic law. Under international law, a country can exclusively claim anything inside three nautical miles off its shoreline, about five and a half kilometers. Under the 1982 United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, sovereignty extends to 12 nautical miles from shore. Other countries can sail here, but they can't conduct commercial activities like fishing or research, or carry out military activity. Then outside of that area comes what's called the Exclusive Economic Zone, the EEZ. That extends 200 nautical miles from the coast. This is how the Palestinians interpret their claim on territorial waters. And this is the document that the Palestinian Authority sent to the United Nations in 2019 to reinforce that claim. In it, they say they have exclusive rights under international law to fishing, mining and drilling. But these are the facts on the sea. Israel restricts Palestinian fishing boats to this tiny triangle of water. And in the process, Israel has carved out a chunk of the EEZ that Palestinians claim as theirs. These are the zones Israel wants to drill in next. In addition to the licenses recently awarded in Zone G, Israel has previously issued tenders for Zones H and E. A legal center for the protection of Arab minority rights in Israel called Adala says 60% of Zone G alone falls inside the maritime border declared by the state of Palestine. On February the 5th, Adala wrote to the Israeli Energy Ministry to demand that the exploration licenses issued by Israel be cancelled. Adala's legal director, Suhad Bshara, says the situation at sea is a lot like what's going on with the building of illegal settlements in the occupied West Bank. Israel has been engaging in taking advantage of natural resources in the occupied territory. So Gaza is not a unique a case in this regard, land resources are extensively used for the benefit of settlements and other natural resources, including water and so on. And the history is, is well known uh, to everyone, I think. So, yes, there is a very clear uh, uh, history and ongoing policy of exploiting natural resources that belong to the Palestinian people. To be clear, we're talking about an area with a lot of gas. Take the Gaza marine field. It's legally under the jurisdiction of the Palestinian Authority, something even Israel seems to recognize, but it has yet to be drilled because of the occupation. It's thought to hold 30 billion cubic meters of natural gas. That's much more than's needed to power the Palestinian territories, so they could make money selling it. Last July, Israel gave permission to develop Gaza Marine, but the current war means that's unlikely to happen anytime soon. But many are asking, why can Israel dictate whether Gaza Marine can be developed, let alone offer licenses in disputed waters? Here, of course, 
we get into the politics. Israel didn't sign the 1982 UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, although international law suggests it should stick to it. But Israel refuses to recognize Palestine as a sovereign state, so it also refuses to recognize its claim to any waters. Rights groups like Adala and Al Haq say that in itself is illegal. Areas deemed as occupied are supposed to be protected. These are the people who came up with the rule back in 1899. It's enshrined in Article 55 of the Hague Regulations. Israel and its warships off the Gaza coast says something else entirely. And all the while, Palestinians fear their gas is already being diverted by Israel. Old wells drilled by Israel much closer to the coast, like Mary B and Noah, directly border Gaza's waters as seen on a modern map. But the geology that formed the gas fields millions of years ago doesn't follow borders. Drilling from Noah, for example, might also have drained gas from Palestinian areas. The Center for Research on Multinational Corporations based in Amsterdam says that if that happened, it could be interpreted as an act of pillage in violation of international humanitarian and criminal law, which could also incur individual criminal liability. But in the context of the violence being inflicted on the people of Gaza, confidence that anything will be done is close to zero. Now we know for sure they can get away with everything, and literally everything. So, so there's no need to, um, to give the Palestinians anything within their territorial waters, at least from a political point of view. If you can starve children to death, then <laughs> there's like natural gas is way behind that. Either way, Israel has now pretty much drained both Mari B and Noah. It's now pumping gas from its other mega sites like Tamar and Leviathan. Israel's gas consumption and income have risen dramatically. In January, Israel's tax authority said levies collected from profits on gas and other natural resources rose to $1.75 billion in 2023. So where does it all go? Israel exports gas to Jordan and also to Egypt through a pipeline which lies in Palestinian waters, again, with no agreement. Israel is also planning a pipeline with Cyprus as Europe seeks to rid itself altogether of gas imports from Russia. Gas is also a major driver of Israel's sovereign wealth fund. Last September, the finance ministry said it had topped $1 billion. The Israeli government forecasts it will grow to as much as $12 billion in the next decade. Recently, a deal through indirect negotiations was made to divide up a gas field that falls in both Lebanese and Israeli territorial waters. Lebanon and Israel, two countries which are officially in a state of war but the Palestinians are still waiting, in poverty, watching as their gas concessions are bought and sold while the world watches them being killed, while the world watches Gaza being destroyed.